Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about the St. John Chrysostom Society. And joining me in today's show is Father Dan Rohan and Rich Matusi. It's a pleasure to have you both on the show today. Thank you, Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. you know, for the folks that are with us, they may not be familiar with what the St. John Chrysostom Society is. And so it might be good, uh, first of all, to let the folks know, uh, maybe Father Dan, you could do that. Who is St. John Chrysostom? And then we'll have Rich tell us about the society itself. Okay. St. John Chrysostom is a well-known theologian, a father of the church that lived during the fourth century. He was an intellectual young man, gifted with, with gifts of learning and knowledge. And because he had a very devoted family, his parents loved him, but more so the mother because she gave her life to her children, to John and his sister. And John progressed in the scholastical area and eventually as he progressed, he was going into law to study. But then what happened was he found the mother was close to the church in this very special way. Mm -hmm. She became acquainted with the Christians in Antioch because in Antioch, the, the Christians were first called Christians there. At that time, when, when John and his parents were living there, there was over 600,000 people that lived in that city. And of course, Christianity progressed in that, in that city. And John became acquainted with the teachings of the, of the church through his beloved mother who became devoted to the church. Mm -hmm. Of course, her father, his father had passed away at an early, when he was a young child, and that the mother had a great responsibility to raise them. What happened was, eventually when um, John became familiar with the faith, with Christianity, he was eventually, or uh, was baptized by mm -hmm. Archbishop Melotius, and eventually when he became a Christian, he decided to devote his life as a monastic, to go into the desert and be mm -hmm. a monk there. And during that time, he devoted himself to prayer and memorizing scripture. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was, as he was progressing, people would come to see him and would learn. But what happened was, because of the situation and the living as a monastic, he had health issues. Mm -hmm. So he returned back to Antioch. And there, eventually, through the efforts of his archbishop, he was ordained a priest. And once he was ordained a priest, he devoted himself to teaching the faith. He is known as John Chrysostom, meaning the golden mouth. He mm -hmm. was a great angelic preacher. People would pack the church just to see him, listen to him, and were enlightened so much that in that process, as he taught, he wrote many books. According to the tradition of the church now, he produced over 200,000 books on the faith, on Christianity. And what has happened even today in this 21st century, his books are still being published in different languages throughout the world today. He is respected not only in the Orthodox Church, but also in the Western Church amongst the Ro our Mo Roman Catholic brethren. Mm -hmm. So he's a great father of the church. So we're blessed. Matter of fact, we're blessed because even within the Orthodox tradition, the divine liturgy that I serve on Sundays uh, is his divine liturgy that sure. he wrote. Mm -hmm. So that is a real blessing for us. Sure. And I'm, I'm really blessed even within my own community to have the relic of St. John Chrysostom Wonderful. in our parish. Let's have uh, Rich tell us now about the local society and give us a flavor for it. When did it start? Uh, who's all involved in it? And what are some of the goals and objectives? Sure. Uh, just to continue what my dear friend, Father Rohan, has shared with us about John Chrysostom. Our society is about relationships, friendships. Mm -hmm. And we share this doctor of the church, John Chrysostom, together, just like we share a common understanding, although we might celebrate it differently, uh, the seven sacraments. Mm -hmm. The society itself was founded initially in 1926 in mm -hmm. England. And 
As time progressed, in 1998, our chapter president uh, on the national level, Jack Fiegel, who lives in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, helped establish the national chapter. A few years uh, later, we became organized here in Youngstown, and we had many meetings. We would meet at Roman Catholic parishes, Eastern Catholic parishes, Eastern Orthodox parishes, and also a group of Christians called Oriental Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox Christians have invited us to their monastery. Uh, we have some friends from the Protestant community, various churches, and a few uh, Episcopalian Anglicans that have joined us. We share in the culture, worship, discipline, theology, uh, and customs, and the delicious food that we, uh, in our hospitality to one another, have been given uh, opening our churches as homes, mm -hmm. you know. So a typical meeting basically entails we meet in the church, we pray in the tradition of that particular community. So if we would go to Father Rohan's church, it would be St. Mark's Antiochian Orthodox Church. We've been to St. Brendan's Roman Catholic Church, uh, St. Mary's Byzantine Catholic Church, the uh, Coptic Monastery for uh, nuns over in Warren and we pray in the tradition of the community. From there we break and we have fellowship, hospitality is extended to us in various meals, and we have our business meeting and move right into a guest speaker. So the speaker could be invited from, you know, regionally, internationally, or locally, and we've had some great, great speakers. At one time we even had three bishops uh, speak to us at once at uh, St. Uh, John's Greek Orthodox Church. We've got only two minutes left of our first segment. So, Father Dan, in a, in a nutshell, tell us why it's so important to have this dialogue with other faiths, this ecumenical relationship. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And the, our goal is, as a family is to come together to learn from each other, to appreciate what God has given our communities to enrich our lives spiritually, sacramentally. And it's wonderful to come together to see what our traditions have mm -hmm. and have practiced for these many, many years. And we appreciate this gathering because we learn from each other, because the church is universal and God has expressed himself in many ways as far as worship is concerned. And we have our traditions and we learn from each other that way and respect each other that way. It is the love that we show for each other in worshiping God together. We're gonna to talk a little bit more about that with uh, two other guests that are gonna join us. Uh, so Father Rohan, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Richard gonna join us in our final segment, so we'll see you in a few moments. Thank but you. please stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. What have you done for your marriage today? I gave my wife a hug this morning. I thought uh, I love her. I uh, did her hair this morning. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I cooked my husband's uh, favorite breakfast. I bought her an orchid. What have I done for my marriage today? I sent my husband a love email. I read the newspaper to my wife and it cracked her up. She's, but she's still laughing. <laughs> what have you done for your marriage today? Make a change for the better. Need help? Go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Whether it's passing on medicine, a blanket, or something as simple as a glass of water, that's how compassion works. And that's how Mary Knoll works, hand to hand to hand. For nearly a hundred years, Mary Knoll's been passing on your help to the priests and brothers working in 26 countries around the world. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization, dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, serving the world's poor and powerless. And that's how it works. Compassion flows from your hand to the hand of someone in need. Hand to hand to hand. That's Mary Knoll. 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 Welcome back to our show. We're talking about the St. John Chrysostom Society. And joining me now is Socrates Kalitsos and Ray Nakley. It's a pleasure to have you both on the show today. Thank pleasure you for having us. You know, we've been talking uh, with Father Rohan and Rich Matusi about the society and about ecumenical relations. And let's 
give the folks that are with us a little more flavor of what exactly the society provides and what your role in leadership is, Socrates? It's really a difficult uh, question, but it seems so simple to pull people together and to do everything in our power to allow others to realize we are all brothers and sisters in Christ and to not look at each other in an awkward fashion, to feel the fellowship and the family because we are one family, mm -hmm. to realize together that we are all laborers with God mm -hmm. to bring back his family as, as one, as I believe he sincerely always intended it to be. Mm -hmm. And that, that's basically, in my opinion, the role of the society. And uh, we've made wonderful friends and the respect we show each other for the past as well as the future, and it will be one family again. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly that is the hope of the church. That's the Lord's hope, and it's certainly our hope as well. Ray, tell us a little bit about your involvement. You're a Maronite Catholic, so how does that come into play with uh, the ecumenical dialogue? Thanks for that question, Father. Um, I don't know if our listeners understand, even our Catholic listeners, mm -hmm. that our Catholic Church or Universal Church is actually a confederation of uh, 24 churches, the largest of which, of course, is the Latin Rite or the Roman Catholic Church, mm -hmm. which is many times larger than all the rest combined. But these other 23 churches from the East, the Middle East, uh, mm -hmm. Africa, and Eastern Europe uh, are what make the church Catholic or universal. Of course, we'll never really be universal until we are reunited sure. with our Orthodox brethren and hopefully all Christians beyond that. But our goal in the society is, is not to try to proselytize each other or uh, pick off members from one church or the other. That's caused so much uh, ill will in the past. But what I've found is when you respect and understand and learn about other traditions uh, similar to your own, you begin to appreciate the gifts that uh, you've been given. And as an Eastern Christian and e Eastern Catholic, there are so many uh, uh, customs, even even theological mm -hmm. concepts. You know, mm -hmm. not the, the basic faith is, is different, but there are theological concepts that we share with other Eastern Catholic and even Orthodox churches right. that are even different uh, from the Roman Catholic Church. So, as was mentioned in the last mm -hmm. segment. Uh, there isn't just one way mm -hmm. to pray to God, uh, to do the sacraments or the holy mysteries, as we would call them in the East, Catholic or Orthodox, uh, or even the way we perceive uh, God in our lives. The basic faith, I think, comes down to the very same thing, but the multiplicity of traditions is, is what makes it such a beautiful bouquet. Good. Let's talk about some of those facets of the society. For example, uh, is there a study component or a prayer component where when the group gets together, that's part of what you do? Socrates, is that something that's part of the society itself to learn more about one another's denomination or faith? Because of the fact that the guest speakers are from different backgrounds, we get to understand their basic philosophy, to understand uh, how they interpret different things within the church. And we hear prayers that may be offered by the speaker. And it basically allows us to see and hear that we are right. very much together mm -hmm. and have the same, there's only one God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that we look at it from the viewpoint of there's one body, one spirit, and here we are. And yet when that person came in, you may not have thought that at first, but you feel it sure. once you understand. Now, uh, Ray, when we talk about uh, ecumenical dialogue and working with other faiths, how does that make us better people, better neighbors? And why is it important for us to also have that facet of who we are as Christians? Um, I think... Uh respect and humility, which is a great failing for many of us, uh, perhaps most of us. Uh, with good intentions, we become very proud of so many things sure. in our lives, and we think we're special and we're unique, and you know, to a degree, that's wonderful, but mm -hmm. when it comes at the expense 
of our brothers and sisters in, in Christ or mm -hmm. any, any of God's people. Right. Uh, you know, of course, we're ecumenical, not interfaith per se. We're all Christians. But uh, even among Christians, if you look at our history, oh, yes. it's been pretty sad mm -hmm. sometimes. So, um, I, you know, I think it's so much like uh, uh, different ethnic groups. You know, I'm with a group out of the Canfield Fair. We do ethnic displays. And you go from booth to booth, different colors, different traditions, clothing, food. And then sometimes on food, you see that one nationality makes a dish kind of similar to yours. Right. A few differences. Then you see, wow. Oh, that was delicious. I like that. That's kind of, mm -hmm. that's an improvement. You know, I'm going to do that on, on my dish the next time I make it. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes you see the commonalities first. And uh, the differences are wonderful. Spice of life. You know, God did not create a boring world. He created a multicolor, beautiful, brilliantly intricate mosaic. But uh, at the same time, we come away I think appreciating the other traditions and our own more now that we have the relief and can see it in contrast. We're down to the last two minutes of our middle segment. Tell us why respect is such an important facet of what the society is all about, but what ecumenical dialogue is all about. Respect is very important and it actually allows you to look in the mirror and say, who am I and be humble and know who you are and respect your background, but also have respect for your brother and sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. It is amazing how this organization has made so many different backgrounds blend and realize that yes, mm -hmm. we were all together once, we shall be together again with love and respect. And that's certainly the prayer of the church as we had mentioned, but also is that what the society continues to purport? Yeah, on, on, on our banner, I believe uh, the scriptural verses, uh, uh, John chapter 20, verses 17 to 21, mm -hmm. where our Lord is in the Garden of Gethsemane, right. and he's praying, sweating blood in that mm -hmm. famous uh, passion that we've just gone through here in the Easter mm -hmm. season. And he says, you know, Father, I'm paraphrasing here, but, you know, Father, uh, may my disciples be one, mm -hmm as you and I are one, so that those people that they go out to to bring the message will believe mm -hmm. that, you know, they are bringing the real message from, from God. He was so concerned, even among his own disciples, that their divisions, right. and we said, well, who's going to sit closer to the Lord? Mm -hmm. They had rivalries among themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he was sweating blood, worried about them being divided. So for us, it's, it's a scandal that we're not together and we are sincerely committed to having one body of Christ. Well, we're uh, down to our final uh, middle segment now, and we have to say goodbye to you, Socrates. Uh, Ray's gonna stay with us, and we're gonna have Rich back on our show, but we thank you for your work with the society and for the great uh, spirit and witness that you bring. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir. Stay with us, we'll be right back. My name is Sister Maria Claudina, and I run a home for abandoned children. I want to take care of children who have no parents because luckily I come from a very loving family. There are, there are eight of us. And I remember when one of my cousins got sick and she called my mom and said, Mom, the doctor has said that um, I might not have too long to live. Will you please raise my three children for me? I remember we had a meeting at home and my dad called a meeting and my mom was explaining to all of us. And her, my father said, you know, this powerful word, she said, he said, we already have eight. What is three more? We learn to care for each other, to love each other, to fight among each other, to make up, to forgive, to uh, just just to be a family. And I think that's what I um, I learned from home, and I wanted to to share that with children who do not have that love and that opportunity, just to know what a family is all about. By the time we can walk, each of us yearns for the joy that comes from being able to do for ourselves. Church World Service believes that being self-reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Church World Service. Welcome back to our show. We're talking about the St. John Chrysostom Society. And joining me again is Rich Matusi and Ray Nakley. When we talk about the society here locally, let's talk about 
the founding of it and who started it, uh, why did it get started, and what was the, the impetus behind it all? I think the one word I would like to hone in on, and all our guests here have mentioned it, is family. Back in 1994, Father Rohan and I met in the Ohio Army National Guard, and I was his chaplain assistant. He invited me over his house eventually, and we were in the kitchen. And this is where most families gather. Mm -hmm. And as I was bringing my tradition and everything about the Catholic Church, there's 1.3 billion Catholics, he was mentioning about the 300 million Orthodox Christians in the world. As we were discussing some of the finer points of an ecumenical dialogue that we would like to gather others and have them involved, his front door blew open and a fresh breath of air came in, the wind. And we thought that somewhat amusing and you know, reminiscing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at Pentecost. From there, we got a little more serious. And in, oh, probably 1998, we began to formalize the society. Mm -hmm. And in 1999, we turned it over to a dear friend of ours, Mr. Vito Carchetti, who was our president. He was named the chairman of our society. And he gathered the family. Mm -hmm. He gathered the family together. Um, in gathering a family together, it's almost like a family reunion. We know we're related, but we know there's been some separation. Mm -hmm. We were together a thousand years. We've been separated a thousand years. And in this third millennium, Vita was kind enough to gather us on many occasions to talk about unity. And, and Ray, tell us about your particular involvement and why and how you got involved in the society and why has it been so important for you? Well, uh, I think it goes back to uh, Rich and I uh, meeting over at Mount Carmel for a fundraiser for the former Immaculate Conception School. Mm -hmm. You know, Father and I went to school together. Father's just right. a couple of years older than I am, but his family's from the east side originally, right. as is mine. Mm -hmm. We all matriculated through Immaculate Conception grade school and uh, actually belonged to the uh, Roman Catholic Church and the Maronite Church mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, tuition was a better deal that way. <laughs> but uh, I met Rich at, at this uh, dinner for Mount Carmel. I was on the fundraising committee and, you know, People usually think I'm a smart aleck or always you know, trying to tell the jokes and be funny. Rich, Rich was uh, very entertaining to say the least and somehow we became friends. And at that time, as Rich mentioned, we just had a Catholic Orthodox dialogue group. Mm -hmm. So from our conversations there, that one meeting, I think he figured I'd be interested. It's so long ago now, but uh, we became involved. Now also as a, uh, as a Maronite, Again, through the study, mm -hmm. uh, our patron saint, you know, we're the only one of the Catholic churches mm -hmm. that is named after an individual saint. Right. Most are named after a culture, uh, you know, Roman or Latin, right. or, you know, the Byzantine Catholic Church of mm -hmm. Romania, sure. or uh, Bulgaria, or, you know, uh, uh, the Melkites are the uh, kingly people. But we are named after a saint, Marin, who lived in the area of, of Antioch. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we know about him, he was a hermit and a monk who eventually uh, established a monastery. He wanted to be alone, but he had the gift of healing. And apparently he was a great preacher. And he was known to St. John Chrysostom, who was much better known, especially mm -hmm. as Bishop of, uh, Archbishop of uh, Constantinople. And there is a famous letter between them where St. John Chrysostom expresses his deep love and respect for Marin and says, I, you know, I wish communication wasn't so difficult. Please write to us more often. We keep you in our prayers. So uh, St. John Chrysostom himself, along with a few other uh, uh, important religious figures from the ancient world, uh, actually give evidence for the patron saint of our church. Mm -hmm. And I, I hadn't known that until I learned it from within the society. Sure. Let's talk about something that you had mentioned. You know, when people get together to talk about faith, when they talk about what's important to them, and there's a dialogue that happens, eventually, because of respect, they become friends. 
And isn't that what it's all about, this ecumenism, interfaith, that we become friends first of all, and once that happens, then other things can happen. Is that your experience? Oh, absolutely, Father. You know, the, after Vatican II, we've noticed that studying the history of this whole movement of Catholic Orthodox dialogue, it was called initially in its first stage, the dialogue of love, right. charity, mm -hmm. trying to see the redeeming qualities in the other, the goodness in the other, and that has been mentioned here today on several occasions. And coming to the reality of why we're different, why we're apart, and trying to understand these in a better light. I think we have a little more room here, historically speaking, and we could catch our breath and, and, and study this, uh, these differences in light of what we have in common. I mean, we're, we belong to apostolic churches that go back to Jesus, and we see that at times there have been some terrible misunderstandings. We have spoken past each other. Mm -hmm. We stop communicating, and with that, the family drifts. And in this family reunion model of our society and our meetings, we're trying to find that common ground and reestablishing the unity we once had. We've got about two minutes left. So Ray, share with the folks that are with us why this uh, society, St. John Chrysostom, is so important for continued relations with Orthodox and Catholics. I, I, I think what uh, the society gives those who are, are so moved is a chance to really understand what Christianity is about. Yes, the, the accoutrements and the uh, different rituals and prayers are a wonderful way uh, maybe to express our spirituality, but because of, of that respect, see, once we establish a safe zone, we're not trying to change your faith. We're not trying to put one over another. And, and you can let down that guard and be relaxed. Again, that comes back to f uh, friendship and family. Mm -hmm. Then you can not only appreciate the other's tradition, uh, but your own, and, and, and learn things about yourself that you may have never taken the time mm -hmm. to, found out, to find out. So I, I, I feel really it's mutually reinforcing uh, this this dialogue of love, as uh, Rich put it, because ultimately that's what God is, love. Well, we certainly uh, appreciate your presence on our show, Rich Matusi, Ray Nakley, for enlightening us about St. John Chrysostom. We had the website up for those who might be interested in learning more about it, uh, and perhaps even participating in the ecumenical dialogue. And we pray for its continuance and for the wonderful work that uh, you and the other members are doing. So thank you very much. Thank you thank for you having Father. us. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.